If we do not want deadlock to occur in the system, we can either prevent deadlock or avoid deadlock. In deadlock prevention scheme, before moving to execution itself, we ensure that deadlock will not occur in the system by violating one of the four necessary conditions of deadlock. And in deadlock avoidance scheme, System move to execution on the way during runtime, we keep on avoiding deadlock by granting only those requests which will keep the system in a safe state or no deadlock state. And if we are not preventing deadlock and if we are not avoiding deadlock during runtime, then usually deadlock will occur in the system. In such cases, the only possible way of handling deadlock, the next possible way of handling deadlock is to detect a deadlock state when it occurs and then recover from it. For that, we should be able to represent a particular state of the system. Then only we can represent the current state of the system. And then we should be able to identify whether the current state is a deadlock state or not. Till now we discussed about two ways of representing the state of the system. The resource allocation graph method and matrix vector representation method. This is a single instance resource system, its corresponding resource allocation graph and this is the corresponding matrix vector representation. This is a multiple instance resource system and its corresponding resource allocation graph and this is the matrix vector representation for it. So we can represent the state of a system by using resource allocation graph or by using matrix vector representation. But how to detect a deadlock state? When we discussed about resource allocation graph, we have seen that if, if the state of a system is in deadlock, then there will be a cycle in the resource allocation graph, whether it is single instance resource system or multi instance resource system. And in single instance resource system, if there is a cycle in resource allocation graph, then it's confirmed that a deadlock exits in that system. So a cycle in the resource allocation graph can be used as a way of detecting deadlock for single instance resources. But in multi-instance resource system, if there is a cycle in resource allocation graph, we cannot confirm whether a deadlock state exists or not. So the resource allocation graph method, cycle in resource allocation graph, cannot be used as a way of detecting deadlock in multi-instance resource system. So for multiple instance resources, the next possible way to detect deadlock is by using Banker's algorithm on this matrix representation. So for single instance resources, resource allocation graph method is used to detect deadlock and for multi instance resource system, Banker's algorithm method is used to detect deadlock. And here we are detecting a deadlock in the current state. We are checking whether the current state is a deadlock state or not. In the current state, we will have processes, resources, some resources already allocated to the processes and some resources requested by the processes. So in the resource allocation graph, we will have processes, resources, the allocation edges and request edges and in the matrix re representation we have allocation matrix showing the allocations and request matrix showing the current request made by the processes and we use the resource allocation graph method to avoid the deadlock there we used a variant of resource allocation graph by including one more edge called claim edge the claim edge represent the future needs of the process because the deadlock avoidance method works on the future requirements of the process. So we need something called claim edges. 
and here we are detecting deadlock from a current state so we use a variant of another variant of resource allocation graph called wait for graph in the wait for graph we remove the vertices for resources we have only processes as vertices and then the edges become wait for edges because here we are checking for the condition whether processes waiting for other processes and finally all of them are moving to a block state. And when we discussed about using Banker's algorithm for deadlock avoidance, there we used the allocation metrics and future needs metrics, maximum future needs metrics. The maximum future need metric, they represented the future needs of the processor because the deadlock avoidance method work is based on the future requirements of the process and here we are detecting deadlock in the current state so we need allocation metrics and request metrics instead of maximum future need metrics.